Hello students, I welcome all of you to Infinity Learn by Sri Chaitanya. So students, on 5th of May 2024, a NEET exam was conducted and the paper was nice. But there was a issue with one of the questions asked in physics. And uh, I'll obviously tell you what was the issue with that question. But before talking about the issue, let's just have a look at what that question actually was. So the question was of two statement. It was a statement based uh, problem. And as you can see, there are two statements over here. So talking about the first statement that is atoms are electrically neutral as they contain equal number of positive and negative charges. Now this statement is perfectly fine. There is no issue in this statement. It's perfectly fine. It's perfectly right also. So this statement is correct. Now the main bone of contention over here was statement two. So atoms of each just look at this word each. So atoms of each element are stable and they emit characteristic spectrum. Now this, this statement was the main problematic thing in this particular question. So what happens is we have the NCRT being uh, revised last year. You all must be knowing it's around one year. Now if we check both these NCRTs. So this statement is given in the summary section. And in the summary section, it's quite intuitive to know that uh, in the old NCRT, in the old NCRT, what happened is that this particular statement was given as it is. So according to the old NCRT, this is a correct statement. But according to the new NCRT, this each has been replaced by most. That is the only difference. And obviously, when you think about it in terms of physics, you can definitely give various kinds of reasons. But this video which I'm making is not to define physics or to uh, tell you what is the correct answer or not. But yes, to give you a realized picture, a real picture. And major agenda over here is that students shouldn't be at risk in this scenario and students should be benefit. So the main agenda behind this video is student centric only that what actually should be done in this scenario. So first let's look at what is the case over here? Now, this is a snip from the new NCRT and this is a snip from the old NCRT. Just read the statement. Atoms of most of the elements are stable. Okay, this is the line of new NCRT. And the old one is atoms of each element are stable. And the rest portion is exactly same. They emit characteristic spectrum, they emit characteristic spectrum. Okay. Now, this thing, this only change is the main problem statement over here. Because if you just follow the new NCRT, then what happens to this question is this becomes wrong. This statement 2 becomes wrong and the correct answer now is going to be statement 1 is correct and statement 2 is incorrect. But if you go by the old NCRT which says each, then in that scenario both these statements are correct and option number 3 is going to be the correct answer. So many students have attempted option number 3. Some might have definitely attempted option number 1 as well. That's obviously true. That can be a possibility. But the point is, this should be the reason behind uh, getting the correct answer. I don't think so. Because I have various arguments over here. So number one argument over here is this SNP only. Both of them are NCRT only. You just cannot deny that this is not NCRT and this is NCRT. No, they are NCRT only. And NCRT is a book which has been followed by students from, from past so many years. Next thing over here is, let's say suppose we are talking that the new NCRT is over here, right? And it obviously is replacing the old NCRT. So the next question over here is, throughout the country, if I go anywhere, I just cannot consider the fact that every student was studying from the new NCRT. There are so many regions in South where I actually got to know, there was no availability of the new NCRTs as well. No availability of the NCRTs. So if a student... Think in this manner, where you will go to go uh, to purchase a new NCRT, obviously to a nearby vendor. And let's say the vendor is obviously having the inventory of the old one. And uh, you just go over there, he gives you the new NCRT or the old one. You have no idea and even that vendor has no idea about. So at the end of the day, what is happening is you are not intensely but studying the same thing, right? The old one. Because if I talk about a general sense, then in a general sense, the new versus the old, the major element, the major differentiator over here were the deleted syllabus. The new NCRT had not those portions which had been deleted from the syllabus, right? So majorly students were 
following the old one and leaving all those portions which have been deleted. Clear? So non-availability is one of the reasons. Next reason is students were thinking that only the deleted portion is remaining or it has been uh, removed and these kinds of minor things were not being taken that seriously. Okay. So this actually cannot define the answer to this problem. Okay. Uh, whatever the question is, I don't think if it is in the new NCRT, you can clearly claim, okay, uh, statement 2 is incorrect or uh, if it's there in the uh, previous one, you can say, okay, statement uh, 2 is also correct. So I don't think this is a very genuine case wherein we can say this. Now, that's not all. I have some more arguments also. The next argument over here is the statement is about atoms. Now, this is a bit of conceptual one. I, I will just go into uh, the physics portion of it. So the statement is about atoms, right? And that snip which I have taken is from the summary of the chapter which is atoms. Now if you go by the chronology right, so when we start modern physics, first we go for dual nature of matter and radiation, then we go ahead for atoms, then we go ahead for nuclear. So nuclear is a chapter which is yet to come. Student already right now is reading atoms only. And the student has no idea if suppose uh, the student is going in uh, chronology, then the student presently is having no idea about uh, nuclear decay or uh, what all kind of nuclear reactions happen, how the atom can get disintegrated or basically the nucleus can get disintegrated. So in that sense and also in one sense that it is specifically talking about atoms only and nuclear decay is not ever is there is no hint also given that nuclear decay is being put in in that question. So that's wrong if I suppose or if I say because see the main thing is yes atoms of all are not stable I know that there are many atoms uh, whose nuclei that disintegrates that's true that's true but nuclear decay is the thing through which the atoms are uh, disintegrating into and, and getting created into new one so that element is not clearly defined that that is included in that part another main problem over here is see the statement, if you check clearly, it had two statements. The part A of the statement was that atoms of each element are stable. This was part A and the part B was that they emit characteristic spectrum. Now, the point is these two statements are to be taken as a union because they're talking about the entire statement. These are not two statements. This is a single statement too only, right? And it has two parts. It has two parts. Now, when you look at them in union, when you're looking at them in union, so obviously you will think in this manner, yes, atoms are stable and yes, genuinely they emit characteristic spectrum. Whenever electrons, they move from higher orbits to lower orbits, they are going to emit electromagnetic spectrum and that eventually is your characteristic spectrum. So the main theme over here, the uh, what you, what I can just specify over the crux of the question is majorly lying towards the characteristic spectrum thing. Okay, so student will not actually incline his mind towards the stability of the matter uh, of the atom and that to talking about and thinking about the stability in terms of nuclear decay. So this 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 actually is a problem and this this kind of logical thinking and the concept flow is actually taught to us by NCRT only. So if you people are going to read NCRT this the kind of manner in which you are perceiving this question as that has been taught to us by NCRT only. That's that's the thing. So if NCRT is telling us to think towards this question in a manner through which this should be taken and in that scenario statement 2 has to be correct right but still I am not saying that take both the, uh, the statements as correct and give the answer that both statement 1 and statement 2 is correct what I am just proposing and requesting to the authorities over here is that see this is a kind of there is some problem right and uh, this is a, a situation where we are not clear we are not clear about what is going to be the correct answer. Now, in this sense, students should not be the uh, party which should be at risk and student should not get the negative marks. Students should not get the negative marks. In this scenario, the, the key thing which should happen is that all the students should get bonus over here or all those who have corrected both the statements as correct or statement one correct and statement two incorrect, they should get the marks or this entire question should be deleted. This is a normal request which me being as a faculty and me being as a teacher to so many students can request the authorities and also I would like you to share this video with as many people as you can so we so that maybe students are not uh, the person who will suffer over here and uh, the thing should be dealt with clearly because see 
even one marks is actually very important when I talk about neat results, right? One mark can actually create a difference in the ranks in uh, uh, hundreds or fifties. And here we are talking about entire one question which carries four marks. So, and many of them who might have uh, checked ops, both the statements as correct and they get that statement one is correct, statement two is incorrect. They will actually lose the four marks along with that a negative. So it's a five marks loss. So overall, things are actually pretty at risk and uh, uh, looking at the gravity of this exam and the intention with which students try to appear for this exam, they struggle a lot. I think uh, we should drop this question and we should provide a bonus to all the students or either we should provide a solution which is equal to all of them. So that's going to be all from my end for this video. I hope you have liked it and if you have liked it, please share it with as many people as you can. That's going to be all. Thank you and bye-bye.